Macca's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here playing The Last of Us 2 and in this video I will be showcasing all of the weapons or guns available in the game. I'll also be showing all of them fully upgraded and I'll show a little bit of gameplay with each one so you can get a full idea of everything you can expect in the game. Now obviously this video will contain some spoilers. I will try to keep out any major plot points when possible but you've been warned. This video will be split into two halves. The first half of the video will showcase all of Ellie's guns, and the second half of the video will showcase someone else's. As a general rule of thumb, adding a scope, increasing damage, or increasing your weapon stability is a great upgrade. You can also do things like get extra mag capacity, but that's not going to be useful for you unless you're playing on a much lower difficulty. We will start off with the bolt action rifle. This was my go-to weapon throughout the game and it's great even at the start of the game without any upgrades. But once you attach a scope and the damage boost, it's an absolute killing machine and will pretty much one hit any human enemy regardless of where you hit them, even on the higher difficulties. Just for reference in terms of the video you'll be seeing, I'll go through each weapon, each upgrade, I'll show the weapon through the inspection tool, and then I'll allow some gameplay to play out without commentary so you can hear it in action. Now next up we have the pump shotgun. It is actually a missable weapon. I have a separate video, but if you don't grab this in Seattle day one, unfortunately you'll have to play the game without this weapon. Now since it's a shotgun, it's going to be extremely powerful at close range and will pretty much one hit kill anything up close, but it obviously doesn't do very well mid range or anything further than that. The only downside I found is that the shotgun ammo is pretty limited throughout my playthrough. So when I did have shotgun ammo, I ended up saving it for some of the larger baddies in the game. Next up, we have the bow, which is unlocked several hours into Ellie's storyline. And this one is going to have two ammo types as well, the standard arrows and the explosive arrows. This is going to be an extremely useful weapon on the higher difficulties, as when you kill an enemy with an arrow, you can actually reclaim the arrow and, you know, get your ammo back. So since ammo is a pretty big struggle on that difficulty, it's going to be really useful to do that. And also the explosive arrows are obviously going to be extremely powerful and you'll be able to take out groups of enemies in one shot if you are able to hit. The only downside is that the arrow drop can sometimes get in the way and it's a little bit hard to use when you're first starting out.
Next up, we have the semi-auto pistol, which can be silenced or just regularly unsilenced. And this is not a bad weapon, but really not much to get excited about. It's a pistol. Unsilenced, it's fine as a last resort, but the main thing you're going to use this weapon for is for stealth takeouts at a distance with a silencer. And because the silencer is so important to the gun, I would highly recommend investing into the skills that increase the durability of silencers that you craft. It'll let you get more out of the gun when you use it. Next up, we have the revolver. It's a revolver. You are actually going to be using this weapon quite a bit in the game because the ammo for it is so abundant. And even though the gun, the gun can't be silenced, I would still give the edge to it over the semi-auto pistol because of the damage boost upgrade. It's going to do a lot more damage to most of the enemies you encounter in the game. Last but not least, we have the SMG, which is unlocked at the very end of the game, and it can't be upgraded because of that. It is cool because it will carry over to New Game Plus mode, but ammo is extremely scarce. It's a really great gun for stealth because of the built-in silencer, and it also looks extremely cool. Somewhere in this area. Alan? Alan's dead! How the hell? Who the fuck's out there? Like the plane. Search this whole goddamn area. At this point in the video, I'll be switching over to the other player you play as, which is Abby. And just like Ellie, they have a total of six weapons, five of which can be upgraded at a workbench. Some of her weapons are similar to Ellie's, but there are a few cool variations as well. Similar to Ellie, for upgrades, you want to focus on things that add a scope, increase the damage, or affect your weapon stability. So we're going to start off with the semi-auto rifle, which is comparable to Ellie's sniper. It's not going to be as powerful, though, as it has a smaller scope and the bullets do less damage, but you will find a lot of ammo for this gun, so that's going to be why you're using it a lot. It also does have a burst option available, but I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it, and it has a cool black finish when fully upgraded. Next up, we have the crossbow, which is similar to Ellie's, but not nearly as good and not nearly as versatile. It's still going to be very useful on survivor difficulty because you can grab those arrows back for ammo. 
but the scope can be extremely tricky to use when you first get it, so there's a lot of getting used to, and I didn't find myself using this very often throughout my playthrough either. The next gun is the double barrel shotgun, which is a missable gun found in Seattle day one. I have a separate video for that if you'd like to check it out. This one is definitely better than Ellie's shotgun in my opinion, and it's much better at mid-range, obviously still very effective at close range as well. And unlike Ellie's shotgun, the double barrel has two different ammo types, the standard ammo type and the incendiary ammo type, which is basically a fire bullet. The incendiary, incendiary rounds have a huge large spread that will light enemies on fire, which is going to be very useful against the larger enemies and bosses as well. So this one's going to be pretty useful if you upgrade it in that direction. The fourth weapon here is the military pistol, which is definitely a better pistol than Ellie's standard pistol once you have all the upgrades. It's also a lot easier to handle as well, and you'll also be able to craft silencers for the military pistol, so that's something you'll probably want to do, and that's probably the main reason you're going to be using this gun is for those silenced pistol scenarios. Next, we're looking at the hunting pistol, another gun that can be missed. I have a video for it if you'd like to check it out. As I said earlier, there are three guns that can be missed, and this is the third one. Similar to Ellie's revolver, this thing is going to hit like a sniper rifle and can be upgraded with a scope. And probably this was my go-to weapon while playing as Abby. With the scope and damage upgrade, this is basically a pocket sniper rifle. The one downside to the gun is that it will only ha hold one round, so every time you fire it, you basically have to go through a little uh, reload animation and chamber a new round, which if there's a lot of enemies and you're being attacked or if you miss your shot, is obviously going to be a pretty bad day for you. Taking the group into the woods at sundown. Sasha! It's an ambush! It came from that direction!
Last but not least is the flamethrower, which cannot be upgraded as you get it right at the end of the game and the ammo for it is somewhat limited. Again, like the LMG, this will carry over if you start on New Game Plus in your second playthrough and it's going to be most useful for the larger infected and the bosses and obviously it looks very cool. That's all of the weapons available in The Last of Us 2 with all of the full upgrades. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if it was helpful or informational. Share the video with a friend. A special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to Mr. Hippo 11, William Seaman, Elder Ghost, and Puffy Vins. I'll see you soon. Peace.